Hey guys, I'm Bilal Amjad and welcome to Programmer's Guide to Internet of Things series part 4. In the very first video, we talked about Raspberry Pi 3, UWP and um, Internet of Things. Then in the second part of our series, we have we have explored Raspberry Pi 3 model B chip and we have seen what elements uh, are installed on the, that chip. Then in uh, part 3, uh, we have installed Windows operating system on our Raspberry Pi we have configured it to work perfectly now in this video lesson we will develop a uwp application that will help us in developing in turning on and off uh, lights and this is a small application which we can develop with the help of raspberry pi so let's see how we can develop such application with the help of uwp just like all dotnet project just go to visual studio and you have to create a new project select windows under the hood of visual c sharp and select blank app universal windows then give it a name hello to iot then you have to select the target and minimum version uh, it seems perfect here we go visual studio will create all the necessary files for you so there is a main page.xaml file here this .xaml file is actually the front end of your application. Whatever you want to design, you have to do that in XAML file. If you are familiar with WPF application, similar XAML file is also there. Whatever is relevant to design part is um, coded here in the XAML language, which is another markup language by Microsoft. With every .xaml file, we have a code behind file that is in C sharp language. So whatever you want to write in C sharp, you have to actually write in this file. So prior moving to any uh, any further code, just add some necessary tools and references in this project. We need only the IoT Windows IoT extension to be included in this project. And to include that extension, right click the references, select add references. Under the hood of universal windows, select extensions and this, uh, there will be option of windows IoT extension for UWP. Just select it. Click OK. And now it will be the part of your project. Now we have to write a function that will initialize our Raspberry Pi 3's GPIO. We have to add the object GPI controller. You have to add a reference of Windows IoT uh, here in your project before using it. Now the reference is there, so I can use this object. Uh, it have a function of get default. Just call it. Now we have to first of all check rather. GPIO exist in that particular device or not because GPIO is all only the part of Raspberry Pi 3 in this case not my laptop so when I will create this project I will build sorry this project then it will prompt me that you don't have any GPIO so you cannot initialize any pen or switch so first of all I have to check if GPIO exists in my in any machine or not and the procedure is you have uh, to check rather this GPIO is null or not. So if it is not null, do something else. Show the message. So now let's initialize our pins which we want to use on Raspberry Pi 3. So first of all you have to create some pin. Pin 1, pin 2. So now remember there are three steps for initializing a pin. First of all you have to tell that which pin on Raspberry Pi you are going to use. So I will tell that G for pin 1, GPIO should open the pin twenty because I am going to use pin number 20 and 21 as appearing on your screen as well 
and for pin 2 I will use pin 21 this is the first step and the second step you have to keep these pins off and how you can do that select your pin and you have to write a value there are two values to be right for against any pin that are high or low high stands for turning on which is one and low stand for zero which says keep the pin off so I want the pin to be off uh, at initial stage similarly I will do the same thing for pin 2 now the last step, the third one we have to set the drive mode of our pin to be output there are many modes available in our GPIO like input input pull down pull up output output open drain etc but right now we are actually going to see output from some uh, from these pins so we will select the output mode that's all this is how we can initialize a GPIO in uh, UWP application just call this function in the constructor of your application oh sorry no, this is not initialized component this is initialized GPIO so now when I will build this project this will give me error that no GPIO found because GPIO is a part of Raspberry Pi not the part of my laptop so it will give me error that GPIO, GPIO not found so it will not initialize the pins so let's wait for building the project Here we go. So now, as I told you, that it will prompt me with a message that no GPIO found because there is no GPIO in my controller. So the application is working right. But one thing, the code which we have wrought right now is for initializing. This is not turning on any kind of bulb or turning off. So we have to now write the code to turn on and off the lights and this is pretty much straightforward and pretty much simple all you need to do is that you have to add some toggle switch button in your XAML application and uh, let's do that I'm creating a stack manual I'm keeping it in the center of my screen and now I need to toggle switch let's name then switch one or uh, let me rename it with light one So this is uh, the design view of our application so you can see there is uh, two switches switch one and switch two on the screen let me fit them to the screen this these are two switches which we have added right now now I will create a fun, uh, event that will trigger on changing the state of this button from off to on or to off or from on to off so that state or that event is actually the toggle event now we have to handle the code for these toggled events so here are the two functions depending on what button is going to be toggled so for the switch one first of all we have to check if the switch is on or off so if it is on then it have to turn on the light and as I told you to turning on the pin we have to write the value high else keep the value low 
let's do same for our second button or second switch that's all now uh, let me build the application and I can't test this application right now because first of all I have to connect a Raspberry Pi with my laptop and I have to debug this application right away with my Raspberry Pi 3 from Visual Studio so how we can do that is our very next part so let me show you the output of this application and then we will move toward actually deploying this application right away from Visual Studio to our Raspberry Pi 3. So the same message no GPU found is appearing but two buttons are also there. So this is the output of my application. So I'll be waiting for you on the uh, ne very next video because in that next video we will see how we can uh, build this application right away on Raspberry Pi 3 with the help of Visual Studio. Thank you for watching the video. Happy coding.